All right, all right, listen. I love Monster Hunter. I played Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on my DS, got my Switch as a gift, bought Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, moved to Monster Hunter World on my PC, played through Iceborne, then Monster Hunter Rise came out, and it was beautiful. Let me tell you. After Sunbreak, it got me thinking, the monsters look gorgeous, and they're cool as hell. So let's talk about it. God, I love Rajang. A funny monkey like myself gets supercharged with lightning, looking like something straight out of Dragon Ball, and he gets stronger the angrier he becomes, like a super furry Hulk. Fang Beast and Rise, while they are low in number, some of them really have great designs. The one I want to discuss right now is Garangom. Imagine Rajang, but greener, bigger, and scaly. I, I think he has scales. I don't know. Now you have to abandon your home and settle somewhere else because you decided to piss this thing off. But seriously, look at him. Big boy, am I right? Fighting this guy really sells the whole the bigger they are, the harder they hit notion. People say that, right? Eh, whatever. What does matter is what he can do. Your first time hunting him will be a doozy, but getting his animations and attacks down won't be too difficult. But let's look at his enraged state. Both of them. For the first, he drives his fist into the ground, pulling out two elemental gloves, quote unquote. His left hand is a mossy water slash stone block that inflicts, you guessed it, water blight and his right hand becomes encased in a magma block that inflicts blast blight. Bro, how fucking awesome is that? Listen to the lore. They excrete fluids and help plants grow, and it's that fluid that hardens the materials around his fist. But then there's his other enraged state, which kind of stacks on his current rage, if you know what I'm talking about. The animation is sick. Along with giving himself boxing gloves, he drags his face on the floor, snorts steam like an addicted crackhead, and infuses it into his attacks. The lava aesthetic on his right hand tells me he's normally a docile creature until undisturbed. Exactly what is said in the description too. Thanks for pointing that out already, me. Regardless, I love this guy. Not only is he one of the three lords, but his epithet is also awesome. Wandering Colossus. If he were to fight Rajang, his shit is getting kicked in. But he wins in my heart. On to the next. <laughs> Alright, so you know transformations, right? Just the colors and the power behind them, especially how they're introduced and portrayed. I think a lot of us here remember Goku turning Super Saiyan for the first time. Sorry for another Dragon Ball reference. Then Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, followed by Super Saiyan 4. Then came Dragon Ball Super with Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Count how many times I said Saiyan. Dude, their reveals were crazy. At least for me. So with that in mind, please take a look at Luna Garon. This werewolf-like Fang Wyvern deserves its hype. The first time I saw it in the cutscene, I knew this bitch would be a challenge. It more than exceeded my expectations. It's a nice monster, so the blue fits well. On top of that, due to a special organ, she can freeze the air she inhales and uses it in her attacks. The first rage state has her expelling all that frozen air, forming an armor so thick it even adds spikes at the end of her hands and feet. It's so good, like Wolverine. Then she gets on both of her hind feet. This picture? This picture goes hard. Imagine trying to cosplay like this, even though I couldn't really find any on the internet. I really have trouble expressing how much awe I'm in every time she gets this mad. The armor looks so good, but that's for another video. Maybe. No money back guaranteed. Oh, I forgot to mention, she looks buff because she turns off that organ I mentioned earlier, which does allow her body temperature to expand her muscles. Even her super attack, that's what I like to call it, is cool. She flips back and lunges forward, slicing the space in front of her. Thank god the hitbox is generous, because it will probably one-shot you. Yeah, it hurts. A lot. You even notice her bright red blood when she stands up. I love how she looks. Oh, did I also mention that she's one of the three lords? With a title like Moonlight Nocturne, you can't get any cooler. That pun was great, and if you didn't like it, you can go feast on some sand from the Gobi Desert. Everyone loves Elder Dragons. I love Elder Dragons so much. They're the natural disasters of Monster Hunter, each having control of an element that makes them both super hard to hunt and also astonishingly beautiful. Teostra has fire. Kushala Daora commands the winds. Camellios changes the atmosphere in order to camouflage itself. And so much more. Spoilers ahead, but I'm talking about Sunbreak's final boss. Up until all the title update monsters. And his name is Geis Magorm. That name, Geis Magorm. That is so cool. You can probably tell how big and destructive that thing is just from saying it out loud. Large health pool, even larger attacks, and a killer soundtrack to boot. 
You drop down into the hole he made, the first layer, mind you, and roars immediately, letting you know he's there waiting. All of his attacks cause multiple explosions that hit hard, inflicting blast blight. He has his one attack on the first layer. It's where you can do the damage necessary to make him descend, where he sucks the air in front of him, creating a vacuum, claps his hands together, and nukes the space in front of him. Then there's the second phase, which, when you do even more damage, he attempts to climb out, shooting out his little bat buddies to go annoy you, while you're on these machine guns that fall from the sky in order for you to shoot him. Then comes the third phase, the third fucking phase, and he goes all out, absorbing the energy around him, raining down rocks from the sky, and blowing up the ground whenever he feels like it. He also turns his back into a jetpack and tries to run you over like a white girl that you just cheated on a couple months ago. And let's talk about the soundtrack. Capcom always incorporates the Monster Hunter main theme into their final boss fights, and it never misses. I can listen and pop off to this for hours, let me tell you. I enjoyed writing for this video and I can't wait for the new title update in April. I'll have to actually catch up since the Risen Elders just released a couple months ago and college was holding me by the nuts back then. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, see you later.